Uh, today, uh, one of the things I, we're going to talk about several things on old windows in this webinar, but I uh, just wanted to give you some background on myself. Um, my uh, company is Austin Historical. I'm based down here in Orlando, Florida. Yes, I'm in my workshop and yes, it is hot. So if you see me sweating, that's because it's May in uh, Florida. Um, and uh, I, uh, my company restores uh, historic windows all across the country. Obviously, we're focused here in the southeast because that's the easiest stuff for us to get to. But we work on stuff as far away as Massachusetts and, and Texas to the west. So uh, we're not afraid of it no matter where it is. Um, we focus on windows, but we do other things like plaster, uh, wood flooring, sidings, and exteriors and things like that. So it's really fun. And then when I'm not doing that on uh, a few days a week, I am writing at thecraftsmanblog.com. And that's where um, I have tried to take what I do out in the field and try and boil it down into simple to uh, understand and explain kind of concepts and tutorials, whether it's uh, our videos on YouTube or the blog posts on the blog itself. Um, uh, that is to try and really help homeowners, especially with their old houses, show them what to do. What's the, uh, you know, should I replace this? Should I repair it? How do I repair it? Um, we've got stuff there uh, with, uh, on the website, there's a directory of different people all around the country that do historic preservation and restoration, so you can try and find someone in your area, which is, has been really helpful, I think, for a lot of readers. Um, I've got a store with a lot of the products and tools that I'm going to show you today to help you restore your old houses, because old houses and old windows in particular are very DIY friendly. And I'm going to show you some of the things you can do on it today to get some of these uh, repairs taken care of without having to hire a professional if you don't have the uh, means or the time to. So um, all you really need to fix an old window in an old house is a little bit of time and a little bit of elbow grease. So um, that being said, we're going to get into the first portion here, which is um, epoxy. I have a uh, window sash here and uh, it has a damaged corner here. The, the uh, corner has been rotted away. Uh, the first thing you'd really want to do here if you do an epoxy treatment, if you've got rot, is you want to treat the rot with a, fung a fungicide like uh, Boracare or Timbor, something to kill what's growing in here and causing the rot. And uh, after that's done, I am going to get some of these supplies and show you how we are uh, going to repair this uh, epoxy. Very simple epoxy repairs. It's not complex. It's very attainable and I'm going to show you that right now. This is one of my favorite epoxies. There are a lot of different uh, wood epoxies and good epoxies for restoration. This is called, uh, made by a company called Abitron. This is wood epox. This is a filler, so part A and part B. It's real simple. You mix it up 50-50 and uh, you fill the hole with it. These I have already pre-mixed, but this is the basically the primer and consolidant for the wood epox. Part A and part B of something called liquid wood. Uh, liquid wood is just that. It is liquidy and uh, you mix it up and you brush it in there. I'll show you this. Uh, Abitron has these great restoration packs that have some of the uh, wood, wood epox filler and some of the liquid wood all together in a package. This is for the, uh, the smaller version of what you want to do. It's only six ounces of each. These are a gallon each. We go through a lot of it, so that's what I have. Um, when you work with epoxies, one of the most important things you can do is have gloves on. Epoxy is not skin friendly. It is very DIY friendly, but it is not friendly to your skin. So, I'm going to get prepared. Now, what I do, we use these uh, simple little flux brushes because whatever you put in the epoxy is pretty much toast, so use something disposable, something inexpensive. Usually a chip brush is fine too. And you're going to take these two parts, 50-50, and mix them up. Get everything out of there. Now this is assuming you have already done your uh, fungicide treatment to kill the mold and the fungus that's growing in there, if there is mold or fungus. So I'm going to mix this pretty well. Um, usually when we do this, I'm going to want to mix this for just a couple minutes, and I'll do that while I talk, um, and let it sit for five or ten minutes. I'm not going to do that today. So this is just a sample sash but it needs a little bit of time to set up. Just basically you follow the manufacturer's instructions and you'll be just fine on this. So it's pretty easy. You just have to make sure that you combine both elements really well. 
Okay, I'm gonna let that set up here for just a second and I'll show you what we do here. So, I don't have a big section to repair. I need to get some of part A and some of part B. One of the things I like about Abitron a lot is that it's very simple to mix. You just get, it's, you're mixing by volume, so half and half. I want to make sure I've got two pieces, you see there, that are about the same size. And then I'm going to take them, put my tops back on, get this out of the way. And I'm just going to take them and mix them together. Now, I don't know how well you can see it, but these are two different color materials, part A and part B. One is white and the other one is kind of a tan color. You want to mix until it is exactly the same color. And so mix that up. And once you get everything to the same color, which doesn't take too long, you're always going to get some runaways. There we go. Everything's the same color. I'm just going to set that aside. Now we're going to imagine that this has set up for about five minutes. And I am going to brush it into here. I'm going to brush the epoxy into the wood really well. This liquid wood helps consolidate any of the rotten wood fibers and it strengthens them. And also serves to act as a primer for the wood epox for the filler so that it can fill in and have something to grip onto. Now, when you put, once you put this in here, you're gonna let this soak into the wood for another 15 to 20 minutes. Wipe this off my table. Until it gets tacky. When it's tacky, again, we're just speeding this up for purposes of the video, but when it, once this is tacky and it's been absorbed by the wood, you're gonna fill the section with your wood epox. And you want to make sure that you really force it into all the cracks and crevices because you don't want to have any voids in there. There wouldn't have been any voids if it was solid wood. So I'm forcing it in here and it's pushing out the end, which is a good sign. Now some tricks that I like to do, you could leave it like that and try and sand it later because this will take a patch like this, maybe by the end of the day it'll be hard enough to uh, sand. What I like to do is grab a little piece of wood and kind of feather the edges. And I find that that helps with the sanding process. Stuff doesn't come out quite as easily. And then but with this epoxy, you want to make sure that you overfill these joints. If you don't overfill them, this, the epoxy doesn't shrink, but you want to make sure that you can come and sand it back level where it should be. You don't want to have any voids or any uh, you know, ho hollow spots or holidays in here. So it's filled plenty heavy there. And that way, when we come back to it, and it's ready to be sanded. You can just sand it smooth and it'll be great. So uh, thanks so much. Uh, take care of those windows, save those historic buildings, and uh, till next time.